Hello, everyone, and welcome to another amazing, exciting, exhilarating video in my Facebook group, The Portrait Photographer's Resource. Today, as always, I am uh, graced with the presence of an absolutely amazing creative photographer, and he goes by the name of Dan Dalstra. Dan, can you say hi to the world? Hey, guys, how are you? I'm delighted to be here, and you, you, you speak too kindly of me, too kindly, but oh, thrilled no, to be here. I've <laughs> yeah, no, I'm super stoked to, to be here. Um, you know, I, we were just talking or be here with you, I should say. Um, but I am uh, I, we were just talking about this. And my first introduction to you, Dan, um, was not from your amazing work or from your amazing personality, but it was from a video of you and Justin Haugen uh, in bed together at WPPI. And I was yeah. trying to find it, but I couldn't find it. And if I do, I I'm going to link it to the group because it is hilarious. It is so funny. Yeah. Actually, yeah, I actually had to recreate it with my buddy Jared Fix because it was amazing. <laughs> <laughs> I love that. that um, I think Justin might have put that video on his OnlyFans. I'm not sure, but that might be where, where it resides now. So, you know, maybe gotcha. behind a paywall somewhere. Yeah. There you go. There you go. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah I, I mean, I would pay for that. So it does. It, it would make sense if it was on his OnlyFans account. <laughs> Incredible. Incredible. <laughs> Yeah. Yeah. Well, Dan, um, for those of you who don't know you, why don't you kind of give us a little introduction about you? Tell us a little bit about who you are and, and what you're all about. Sure. So um, I've been a wedding and portrait photographer now for, uh, I would say, full time for probably 12 to 15 years. Um, before that, I was a newspaper photojournalist and um, loved that kind of world of, of photojournalism and, you know, every day being different and covering pro sports and, and all that kind of stuff. And then slowly people would say, hey, Dan, well, you know, can, can you shoot my wedding, photograph my wedding? And I always say, hell no, I'm not photographing a wedding, right? I am a journalist, right? Um, you have to be either bleeding or scoring a point if I'm going to take your picture. And, and, and that's it. Um, and then finally, I decided, okay, fine, I'll shoot a wedding, I'll do it, just whatever. And I had the best time, right? I danced, I ate cake. Um, it was incredible. And I found out that all the things that I loved about journalism, about photojournalism, applied in weddings. Like I told someone's story. I tried to make, um, you know, amazing storytelling photos. And and it's kind of really just kind of dubs up nicely into, into wedding and portrait photography. So that's kind of how I got started in that. Um, and since then, I've, I've, I lived in Texas for a while, and, and now I live here in the Midwest in a small little town in Iowa, and um, it's going good. Uh, it's going good. It's always fun to change your market in the middle of a pandemic. So that's fun. Yeah, good times. Yeah, absolutely, man. I, uh, you know, we're, I'm scrolling through your photos right now so everyone can see, and I just, I'm blown away. I mean, I'm always blown away with the quality of all of our, uh, you know, critiquers work, but, um, I, I think maybe I just resonate with your style so much because it's, it's definitely one of the styles that I try to st strive for. Um, and at least the feel, you know, bold and vibrant imagery, true to color, uh, exactly what I, um, what I'm all about as well. And you have just some really powerful moments as well. So it's, um, it's super cool to see. Uh, so I'm, I'm really stoked that you're here today. Thanks, man. I really appreciate that. You know, it's a, it's sort of um, a blessing to get to do what we do and meet these incredible people around the world and tell their stories and document their greatest day. And, and so, yeah, I, I take it. I mean, I, I love to have fun and that's kind of what I'm all about. And, and I, it's just so fun to me, but at the same time, I really do take it seriously. You know, it, yeah. I really do. Um, make sure that I'm giving the best possible service I can to my clients and the best possible images I can. So um, all the while tearing it up on the dance floor is the goal. I mean, so. and you know, there, I think that says a lot because as wedding photographers, it's more than just, our, our success is more than just about being a good photographer, right? Um, we're part of such a 
a big day in a couple's life, right? And, you mm-hmm. know, they're not going to want someone that's just boring or, um, you know, unenthusiastic. They want they want a photographer that's going to be out there celebrating with them uh, and add that's to that exactly vibe, right. you know? Especially with, like, smaller weddings, you know, like 40 guests and all that. Um, you know, if if you're just that kind of lame, boring photographer, it's going to it's gonna show up a lot more than if you were at a wedding with 300 people, so to speak. So, Absolutely, um, yeah. And, uh, yeah. And, you know, to say... To go along with that, I had a bride tell me just just a couple of weeks ago that she said, um, you know, because I was just, ca- you know, as we're photographing, just casual conversation with her and talking about, you know, tell- learning about her. And she said, you're keeping me so calm. And throughout the day, she was like, every time like I talk to you, I'm just, I get calm and chill. And like, thank you so much for that. I was like, well, that, that's good to know also. So good. Yeah. So it's just about that rapport, you know? Absolutely. And, you know, I would love to at some point maybe even get you on for another video uh, just talking about the business side of things or just how to approach a wedding in general, because I feel like, you know, you know, doing this for so long, you probably have some amazing information to share with all of us on just that. Yeah, maybe a tidbit or two, maybe. (laughs) <laughs> yeah. Well, awesome. Um, so if you guys are, um, if you guys are new to this, basically what we do is we are going to look at 20 of your images that you all have uh, submitted and, uh, we're going to go through them one by one and we're going to critique them. We're going to tell you, you know, a little bit what we like, maybe what some things you can improve on on our and at the very end we're going to be giving away a free we're going to be selecting selecting a random winner and we're going to be giving away a free canvas print from pro print I love that. who yeah who's been sponsoring this event ever since its inception um That's so awesome. if you yeah if you are watching live please make sure that you say something in the comments i am looking at them to the monitor on my right we got quite a few people watching actually we got gretchen shannon hiram scott devin michael carrie uh, Kevin. Yeah, we got a lot of people so far. So, uh, Excellent. Please, I love that. Yeah. So please follow along. If you have any questions or have anything that you want to, uh, chime in on, yeah, so go ahead and go for it. Perfect. Hold on. I got to fix a volume issue. One second. No worries. I don't need to hear that echoing. <laughs> yeah. 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 Sorry about that. All right. We're good to go. Okay. Okay. So without further ado, what do you think? Should we just jump right into it? Let's go. Yeah. Go for it. All right. So this first image, actually, I should probably switch my screen so you all can see. Uh, this first image comes from photographer Hector Vasquez. So, um, you know what? I'm going to let you jump in, Dan, only because uh, I've seen a few of your smoking cigar shots before. And I, yeah. I know you probably have some really good insight. So I'm going to let you start. Yeah. Do you know what? I, I, this image catches my eye off the bat right away. I really love it. And I love kind of that kind of soft lighting on his face and, and the, uh, the cigar smoke looks really cool. And, and I'm wondering, you know, did they gel that or just kind of tweak it, the color and post a little bit. Um, but, and I kind of like how the smoke sort of wraps around his face, like kind of right up by his eyes and comes around. It just has a really nice feel to it. Um, yeah. yeah, yeah, I love it. And the texture in his beard looks cool. This is a cool photo. I would, I would be thrilled if I made this photo. Yeah, and he did use a blue magma uh, mag gel just to give you some insight on that. So this was uh, pretty much, you know, obviously there's some editing I'm sure done, but the blue is yeah. from straight off the camera. Yeah, yeah. Um, uh, as far as like maybe what would I change or maybe do differently, um, I might like a little more space around him, you know, just to kind of get an idea of, of maybe a little bit more of the environment could be. Um, you know, are there more of these little um, twinkly lights in the background? Those are really cool. Um, just a little bit more space around him, I think would be nice. Um, what do you think about that? Yeah. Uh, you know, I, I think it, it really depends. I think he either needs to go one way or the other a little bit tighter. So, um, okay. cause he's, he's cutting off the back of his head and he's cutting off, it looks mm-hmm. like almost a little bit of the top of his head. And while that doesn't necessarily bother me, I say you got to kind of go big or go home, right? Make the shot yep. a little bit more environmental or really focus in on some of those key uh, elements. I would say probably the the one critique I have that I would, that you can actually fix really easily in post-production is to bring down the exposure a little bit on his shirt. Um, uh, I was thinking the same thing, yeah. Yeah, uh, and that's gonna bring a little bit more attention to the really key elements of the photograph, the cigar, the smoke, his face, his expression. Um, 
because you have you just have such a map you you know when you look at the photo your eye generally will tend to go to either the brightest or the whitest part of an image so before i go anywhere else i'm actually drawn straight into like his shoulder i notice a little bit of the makeup smeared or whatever that is on his mm -hmm. on his right shoulder so i would absolutely just use the the adjustment brush tool in lightroom or photoshop and bring down that exposure a little bit so it's a little bit yeah. less noticeable yeah, I agree with that wholeheartedly. The other thing I was thinking also is if you, it looks like the light is coming like straight onto his face. If you were to pivot that light either around, um, maybe a little like farther back or even from up above and just change the direction of light a little bit, it might just give it a little bit more interest, a little bit more dimension um, that we could look at um, as far as that goes. But yeah. Absolutely. Absolutely. Well, cool. Um, that's really all I think. I have to say on that photo. So Hector, thank you Look, so much for is, submitting. Yeah. yeah. Hector, great job, man. This is really, really killer shot. I like, I even like the kind of the, the highlight on his watch looks cool. This is a mm -hmm. nice image, bro. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Super cool. Yeah. All right. Well, let's go ahead and move on. Um, so thank you, Hector. Uh, this next photo comes from a, a regular contributor, uh, Randall Mena. So oh, wow. this is a, yeah, he has um, he has such a unique post production style, um, and I'm I'm really it looks like he he actually has like a little bit of, of a vignette around the image, but um, as opposed to a vignette that underexposes the photo, it, it looks like it's blurring it just softly. So you have those really soft images, and it's very apparent, especially when you look at the train of the bride's dress. My my biggest. There's, I have two things that I would want to change here um, immediately just looking at the photo and, um, and, and I'll, I'll add to more, I'll add more to this if I can, if I see something else, but basically my two main critiques, one, um, the, they're a little off center from the chandelier and that kind of bothers me because you have so much symmetry in the photo otherwise you know you have the straight lines of the stairs you have the three arches uh so i feel like just moving them slightly camera right um and getting that sh that sh sand uh, chandelier centered in between a little bit more uh would just be a little bit more pleasing to the eye um and then the other the other small issue I'm seeing is really just their, their facial expressions. You know, I, I'm not really f feeling that they're super into the moment. They kind of both look annoyed if I'm being honest with you, <laughs> um, which, you know, it's a wedding portrait. Like I think there's a difference right. between being a little moody and then being a little annoyed, which is kind of what the vibe I'm getting from them. Um, so, you know, it, it's, it's yeah. subjective of course but um the only the other reason why i suggest that is because if you look at his foot placement his toes are pointing away from the mm. bride which you know your hands and your feet actually convey a lot of emotion as well uh so that's something to keep in mind um when when you're trying to establish a connection have those those toes turn in towards her um uh, and i think it's gonna be a lot stronger of, a, of an image but what do you think it's funny you say that um, about being annoyed because um, I know that uh, after a long day um, that it's pretty easy to get annoyed it, it with, yes. uh, if not with your photographer for like, hurry up, take a shot. I want to get back to the bar. Or right. <laughs> um, uh, I think even my wife and I got in a fight on our wedding day about something that I annoyed her about. So um, that is always a possibility too. Um, you're absolutely a thousand percent right. Just that tiny bit of off center is a little like, mm, I just want to nudge them, just scooch over a little bit. Right. Um, the, the other thing that I, that I would like to see is like the, the grotto walls. Are they, is it, is that blurred on purpose? Um, cause it like those statues are in focus, they're in mm -hmm. focus. Um, I just think that's interesting and it's kind of taking my eye away from the subject. Cause I'm trying to figure that out. You know what I mean? Like, well, um, it's interesting you say that because Randall did actually supply a behind the scenes video, um, as well. So it, there's going to be a little bit of delay on your end, Dan, but basically, okay. um, for everyone else who's watching, um, you can see it, you know, the, the walls look super like they do look just straight off this video that we're watching. They do look kind of soft and not really all of that, um, that sharp. Uh, I do think it was a little bit of a post-production technique though. As I mentioned at the beginning, he kind of had that vignette that maybe blurred a little bit, but, um, 
this is what a cool location. I mean, you can really no, see that yeah. this, yeah, this is just super unique. Um, I would love to shoot there. I wonder, I kind of want to know where this is. Almost looks like an amusement I know, I was, park. <laughs> I was thinking the same thing. And um, yeah, it, it looks really cool. And I can see that the behind the scenes, he's got that cool light and a stick thing. That's pretty cool. Um, yeah. 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 Um, the other thing that would be cool to try, um, you know, it would be throw some gels around in there, right? Like really right. Uh, up, up the drama, darken the background, throw some different color in there and, and really kind of um, experiment with color in this place. Cause it looks like, that would that would be really cool to throw some different gels in there and and really do something like that yeah yeah definitely um well super cool um randall thank you so much for submitting this i really like uh you know i think there's a lot of really really amazingly strong uh parts to this photo um maybe just those couple things you mentioned and you, you got an a plus image absolutely so. and yeah absolutely i love it and yeah i want to know where this is randall drop that in the comments unless it's some hidden spot of yours uh, let us know where it's where you took it. Watch, it's like Disneyland or something. <laughs> <laughs> all right, all right, we're gonna go ahead and move on. This next photo comes from Kelly Buchanan. Um, this and she captured this with a 200 watt strobe and a 51 inch umbrella. That's kind of weird. That's kind of a weird size, 51 inches. Yeah, there are so many things I love about this picture. Um, mm -hmm. I think it looks so cool. Um, and one of the things that I love, like, have you seen like from up above, like the way sort of like oil and water mix, right? It's like this cool um, kind of, I don't know, kind of fluid that the, the draping looks so fluid and almost like it's liquid or something. And then it comes right next to her. And I just love the way that looks. It really yeah, is I stunning. I kind of want to know how that was done. Like if that was a post-production technique or, um, what's going on because it, it does look like it, it just kind of flows into the frame like perfectly yeah yeah um but then i wonder like on the other side should, should we crop it up just a little bit maybe that little bit on the floor right there like yeah i can do without yeah. that bit you know okay. so maybe if you cropped it up and left not so much of that space on the right um i i would like that maybe i'd like to see what that would look like anyway um mm. though i think the lighting is is really well done it's nice you know it doesn't seem overpowering on her. I think the lighting is done really well and, and the backdrop certainly nice and, and seamless. So that looks really cool. I think you're right. I want to know how they did this. Did they liquefy the, the folds in the, in the thing to yeah, give it some kinda, motion? Mm -hmm. Kind of looks like that a little bit. Um, yeah, definitely. Pro I would say, you know, the, my only, the only thing that kind of bothers me a little bit and it's not necessarily it bothers me but it's something that could i think be improved on is you know you know you look at the top left of the frame like we talked about and you have such a nice wavy you have such nice wavy lines and then you go towards the bottom of the the sheet or the dress or whatever this is and you see a lot of wrinkles um mm. in this and you know in like a and i think in a competition setting that's definitely something they would mark you down for uh, i know it sounds right. silly but it's one of those things that's just you know I, judges would look for or um you know something that could potentially uh make a photo not score as high so that's that's probably the only like tech like post-production thing i, I could t i can talk about um the other thing too, and, and maybe you have like a suggestion because I honestly don't, but I'm I'm think there's something about the feet placement that's throwing me off a little bit. Like you have like the bit her big toe on her left foot, uh, kind of pointed like in and touching her right foot a little bit. So I'm wondering yeah. if maybe you know we could do something with those feet because they're they're being cut off a little bit, um, and, and I think it's a little distracting. It's a little distracting. Um, yeah. You know, maybe maybe pull that, or just even if you Photoshop that that draping around them, but just over the feet a little bit, maybe that would help. But also, you know, when you're when you're doing a shot like this, and especially if she's throwing, or who are the photographer, uh, Kelly, if if they're throwing that um, gown up in the air, and you're just snap, 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 and you kind of like you get what you get, you know what I mean? And so, um, hopefully, the feet are placed right to begin with, and you can kind of look at that and say, no, I want your feet more like this. But okay. Um, yeah, I see what you're saying about that. The toes a little bit like, hmm. Um, 
And it's it's funny. It's in hindsight, right? It's like, oh yeah, I should have done the feet differently. But on the, at the same time, I'm sure this person absolutely loves this portrait. Yeah, no, it's an it's an amazing shot. I mean, this is one of those photos that, as a client, you're gonna look at it and be like, holy shit, this is that's yeah. me. This Hell is amazing. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah. imagine this on a huge metal, right? A huge metal print in your house. That would be stunning. Mm hmm. Absolutely. Absolutely. Well, super yeah. cool, Kelly. Thank you for sharing. Um, really solid, really solid photo. Um, yeah, okay. Moving on. Uh, this next photo comes from Brian Green. Um, Brian Green. Yeah. And yeah, it looks like this is from a family shoot. I think last, um, I think last month he shared a photo that we, we said was a little, almost looked like it, it was a little too, like not thought out a little too candid, so to speak. Um, okay. And I think we were we were implying that we would like to see maybe another photo that he took during the actual session. So um, I think this was his intention while he's sharing this photo. So uh, I got, it. yeah. Mm -hmm. I think it's a lovely like I'm on vacation um, kind of portrait, right? Like if this mm -hmm. is um, I don't know if this is like a member of his family or something like that. I, I think it's a nice little. It's a cool location. That mountain in the background looks super cool. The stacked rocks look really cool. Um, and so this is definitely like a nice, like a nice little portrait of a family member, uh, on vacay, you know? Yep. Mm -hmm. And it looks yeah. like, I don't know, did, does he light it? There's some sunlight in her face and it looks like maybe that's maybe either from the sun. Cause the, no, I think it's sunlight. Cause the other thing that below, like the riverbed looks in shadow and then up part here looks like it's in, you know, it's in the sun. So I think that's probably just some sunlight hitting her face, but mm -hmm. I mean, it's balanced, you know, that. Her skin tone looks balanced well, and so uh, that's nice. Yeah, I, I yeah, I, I could, I, th you know, it's, I, I would say it's definitely shot with natural light. You know, she's uh, turning towards the light source, or, or mm -hmm. the sun's maybe just slightly uh, behind her to camera left. Mm -hmm. um, I, I would like to see a way. I think one of the things that can improve this image is I'd like to see a way to create a little bit more separation between her and the surrounding environment because, at you know, as in with you know, speaking from someone that you know loves to shoot environmental portraits, when you're shooting an environmental portrait, one of the things you run the risk of is the <coughs> photo being too busy, right? Yeah. Um, if you you know, if you don't have a way to separate your subject from the rest of the uh, environment, it's going to be a little bit distract. Certain elements are going to be a little bit distracting. So um, th there's one of two ways that I do it personally, and that's either, you know, shoot with a super shallow lens, right? So shooting at like, uh, like 200, like, or like one eight, right? Or F2 or shooting with a telephoto to compress the image. Y'all good there, buddy? I'm all choked up for some okay. reason. Let me let me just take a quick drink. Sorry about that. Okay, <laughs> no worries. Or you know, really underexpose the ambient light using uh, like flash or light modifier or something like that. So that would be my biggest critique is just to uh, find a way to really balance the elements in the uh, in the scene a little bit better. Yeah, yeah. I think it's a it's a like I said. It's a, to me it looks like. Uh, they're on hiking with their family and they stopped and, hey, sit on that rock by those cool balanced rocks that snap a photo of you. Um, and you're right. I think a little separation from the background would be great. And so, you know, next time in the future, you know, maybe look for a way you can put her against the sky or, or something like that and still kind of get that environmental portraiture that you're looking for. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. Danny uh, Gomez replied, just shoot with a prime. <laughs> <laughs> I felt one of that easy, right? right yeah absolutely um so uh i did say your name danny Jeez. <laughs> okay so anyway anything else you would you would have to add to this dan do you know what i just noticed in the very front foreground are the are the same sort of stacked rocks right in the bottom left hand corner and so maybe if if you were going to redo this for some reason maybe this is your backyard or something you maybe frame it to where like you're kind of framing her between these like these dual stacked rocks or something um yeah you know just something a little bit different would be kind of cool just to show both of those kind of things but no yeah that's what I, just caught my eye there at the last minute definitely yeah brian thanks for being a regular uh, contributor i always love you know seeing your images um because it's um i don't know it's just 
it's inspiring to kind of break them down a little bit and and really uh, just you know analyze it. So thank you. Uh, okay, let's go ahead and move on. This next photo comes from photographer Corey Regovich, and um, they included quite a bit of behind the scenes info actually. So I'm gonna read it. So this was. Cool. Um, a video light that was handheld and pointed at the couple from behind. Uh, this was something she, uh, they've always wanted to try, but I'm not sure it was successful. There were rather warm lights from the barn behind me. Um, what is the best technique for this? We used my constant reception light, but I also had flash available. What works better? I think the light should have been pointed up more towards the umbrella, but it was pointed at them. Any help on technique is appreciated. So, okay. I think it's a good teach. I think it's a good teaching moment for sure. This is a great teaching moment. Yeah. So, um, anytime it rains and I'm at a wedding, I'm like begging my couple, "Can we please go outside?" Right? And they're always like, "But my hair or my dress." And I'm like, "You know what? Let's just trust me. Let's go." Um, and so, if they are dead set on that umbrella, uh, and they definitely want that umbrella, then oftentimes what I will try and do, and this is just me. I'm not saying I, I'm the the king of this, but what I would would do it would be, be have the groom or someone hold that light and point it straight up into that umbrella um, especially if it's a white one and then it kind of rains that light softly down on them um, like in this situation i would say lose the umbrella it doesn't look like it's raining that hard and um, it might be it might just like see what it looks like without it and then maybe you could catch more of the raindrops um, and that kind of thing i don't mind their warm skin tones from the warm barn lights um, i i like bold, warm colors myself. So that, that doesn't bother me so much. I'm just right. a little distracted by that, you know, that clear umbrella. I think we could have done either something either without it or I'm um, pointing the light up into it to try and maybe kind of reflect some of that back down on their faces. Um, and um, when I do these, I tend to put my lights, if, if they're not going to hold it, if I'm setting it on a stand, I usually put it farther behind them. Um, okay. And so um, you can really then kind of pull out and really capture a lot of the raindrops coming down um, and so you've got more spread of light behind them to capture, you know, more of the rain or, or, you know, the, whatever, whether it's champagne or rain or whatever you're doing in the, with, with moisture in the air like that. So that, that's my first initial, initial thought. Yeah. I mean, and to expand on that a little bit, you know, I, I think in, in a situation like this, uh, using a flash would work better because um, you can modify it with a grid, back it off mm -hmm. a little bit, still control the spill of light so it's not hitting the ground as much, um, but while at the same time still illuminating a lot of those raindrops. Um, you know, the nice there's there's event there's pros and cons to video or you know steady lights versus or constant light versus flashes, right? Um, with the with a constant light like a video light you can see in real time what your photo is going to look like. Right. Mm -hmm. Um, however, as you probably all know, I prefer flashes because you have a lot more flexibility and a lot more control with what you can do with them, whether it's how you modify it, you shape it, uh, the power. So my vote is almost always flash. Um, I, I could do a whole presentation though on just this subject. So I'm trying to like keep it condensed, but, uh, Honestly, it, the only thing I would disagree with you on, Dan, is I actually like the umbrella. I think because you okay. have – without the umbrella, I feel like it would be a little underwhelming because there's not enough rain to make it mm. really visually exciting. But adding that umbrella adds that element that I feel like would be missing. Um, okay. Interesting. That's just my personal opinion. But again, art is subjective. Uh, the only thing – it has nothing to do with this photo, but you know what really bothers me is the little tags that hang off the end of the umbrellas that you use to roll them up. That, I just, I don't know why, like they, they bother me. It's like, oh, I think just cut them off. <laughs> yeah. Cut that thing up. Right. Or Photoshop yeah. it out. Right. Or Photoshop. It also yeah. looks like, yeah. In the background, it looks like, I don't know what this is. It's like some kind of noisy thing back there. There's also like a square. Yeah. Um, it looks I like can't, a I can't... arch or something. Yeah. Oh, I bet that like maybe it's kind of off in the distance. So yeah, mm -hmm. exactly. Um, and so I probably would have taken those out and kind of cleaned it up noise wise just a little bit too. Um, but yeah, I think you're absolutely right about constant light. And also I wonder in a rainy situation, I would probably trust my flash more so than I would trust any kind of constant light being wet. Um, yeah. 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 But no, I, I, I think it's a great start, especially if this is one of your first times to try and catch this, you know, this backlit rain shot. Uh, great, great, great attempt there. 
Yeah, and one thing I do want to commend the photographer on as well is a lot of time with these these clear umbrellas at night, it's really easy to uh, blow up the highlights. Um, and they didn't do that here. So, so awesome that you were able to maintain the detail in that. Um, so, yeah. So, so very well done. Um, yeah, for all sure. Right. All right, cool deal. Well, um, yeah, Corey, thanks so much for submitting that. Uh, moving on, this next photo comes from another educator. There's a mosquito in my office. Why is there a mosquito? It's October. Uh, anyway, uh, <laughs> uh, this next photo comes from Sandra Meltenberger. And um, if you guys are actually interested in seeing exactly how she captured this, she just did a, uh, a video in her Facebook group um, where she um, – where she breaks down this photo. So Sandra, if you're watching, uh, feel free to share the link so um, people can see that. But um, I'll, I'll start and then you can um, jump in, Dan, Danald. Um, Go for it. My my first thing that just – it's it's honestly hurting my eyes a little bit. <laughs> and that's – the you look at the ceiling and it's not level. It's like, uh, uh, I, I'm going to guess – she corrected this because it's a super easy fix, but just really make sure those lines and those horizons are straight. Um, that's immediately going to turn this, you know, to a, an exceptional image. Um, but what a cool, what a fun, you know, what a fun idea. Uh, all the masks and uh, it's like a masquerade party kind of thing. Uh, super, yeah, I love this super picture. dramatic. Um, I do too. I, I think if I, and th this is the WPPI competition in me speaking, but I think I would like to see a little bit more details in the shadows. Um, that would be my biggest critique, obviously, besides straightening the photo. Um, I'd like to see a little bit more details. That's kind of on the technical side of things. Um, the other thing I, as well is I'd like to see, a little bit of variation in some of the posing you have the group i see one two three gr uh groomsmen you know kind of doing the same thing with their hands just grabbing it um a couple of the bridesmaids uh not really doing much with their hands but these are just little tiny nitpicking you know nitpicky things <laughs> uh, yeah what do you um, think? i think you're right about uh, yeah, you're absolutely right about it. It just seems a little tilted, just a touch. And I think just kind of straighten that out just a tiny bit. Um, I think I'm guessing this is a composite. Um, it is. I haven't yeah, seen her video is. on how she did it, but yeah, I love these pictures and I think they look so extremely cool. And once you kind of master that, that composite technique, um, it's, you can burn them really quickly and get these done relatively quickly. Once you kind of, um, kind of get that skill set down on how to like them and, and how to edit them together. But gosh, I love the colors uh, are, are really nice. I, I see what you're saying about the, um, the hands of the grooms, but it looks like they're symmetrical, right? The, the guys on the outside are, are holding their masks. The one next to them are, are, are doing the hand in front of them. I think that she tried to do that symmetrically okay. um, rather than um, kind of that vanity fair, all kind of doing her own cool guy thing, you know? Um, I see what you're saying. But yeah, yeah, no, I, yeah. And, and there are, the shadows are pretty deep, like, or especially around the, the guy's pants, you know, uh, pant legs that, that, that just kind of vanishes. Um, but on the whole, man, I love this a lot. The venue looks cool. Um, they're exposed just perfectly too, especially to go along with the color in the background. This is so well done. Yeah. So well no, done. It, yeah. It really is. And you know, this was quite a technical shot and I commend her for being able to pull this off on a, on a wedding. Uh, at least I'm assuming it's a wedding. Um, yeah, but she, uh, you know, she had six Gikoto lights with gels, um, uh, two purple, four blue. Uh, they were all individually lit with a Gikoto GT 200, uh, paired with the 24 inch mag mod softbox uh, for a total of 17 images. Yeah. Wow. Yeah, so quite yeah. quite a bit. And the masks yeah. are just cool. Like, I love this horned one in the front. That is the coolest thing. I, I need that mask, actually. So I need yeah. to figure out where that, that came from. Yeah. Definitely, yeah. definitely. Okay. Super cool. Um, yeah, no, I want the link also to see the, the behind the scenes for that. So definitely yeah, I want to look just, into that. 
she did just post it so uh, in the chat oh, in the comments so if you want to uh, right, Sandra. yeah if you want to check it out um, I do I do uh, absolutely all right well super super cool thank you as always Sandra we're going to move on to a photo submitted from Diane just Diane the last name your dogs are well, your dogs want to critique too they do can you hear them yeah yeah ah, just a little bit they are pa they're passionate about photography yeah yeah okay so uh let's uh let's dive into this so uh i'm not really sure what the context is here you know whether it's uh are you gonna go calm them down real quick i'm gonna shut the door real fast so it's not okay. so loud yeah no worries okay um yeah so Sorry i'm not really quite sure what the context is here um kind of hard to tell you know was this like at a festival is this at someone's living room kitchen um but you know definitely when you're you know when you're getting your kids faces painted it's always a you know fun moment in their life to document um couple i'm going to start with some of the obvious things you know okay. i don't know if it's the i don't know if it was just super super zoomed in or um if it was um you know, just on a really low res resolution camera, but it, you know, we kind of have a little bit of some potato quality here, you know, um, a little lower resolution. So that would be my biggest, uh, technical thing, you know, right off the bat is just, you know, whether, especially if this was for like a client or even if it's just for fun, you know, um, as photographers, you know, part of the reason why we invest so much in equipment is just to get a high resolution photo. Um, obviously I understand some cases, you know, we don't have access to super nice equipment. So we try to make the best out of what we have. You know, the best camera is the one you have on you. Um, so with that said, there are a couple things I feel like, um, we could do from a creative standpoint to help improve the image. Um, so first of all, I'd like to probably see a little bit more context, uh, of the scene. So, um, choosing a different angle, maybe where we're a little bit more eye level with, uh, you know, this, the, the child, uh, would give us a little bit more, I think, a um, little more context of what's happening in the scene. Uh, the hand on the bottom right hand screen is a little distracting. Um, mm -hmm. You know, these are just a couple things that, you know, I, you know, changing this would make this a little bit stronger of an image. I'm also seeing a lot of lack of detail in the eyes and the eyes are such an important part of a photograph when you're especially shooting this close up. So, you know, if this was a posed photo, for example, you could turn them towards the light uh, or you could add add light. Um, those are just a few things. W what Would you have anything to add? Yeah, um, I think, first of all, kudos to this photographer for submitting this image. If they've watched your series before and they've seen just these just ridiculously amazing photos come inside and then to to you know to go ahead and send an image in that, you know, obviously maybe you're just getting started or something. And, and I say... That is awesome, you know, just to send in, mm. um, you know, just you're know, sending your photo. It's great. I love that they sent this in. Um, I would want some some kind of, you know, if we're going to take technical stuff out of it completely, I'd want to just see some emotion. Maybe the kid's smiling with his face makeup, just yeah. some kind of um, a little bit of, hey, I'm happy or, oh, my gosh, I scared myself because I'm now a tiger. Oh, my gosh. Um, and it does look like maybe they're at some kind of festival or something with uh, the green and red kind of cloth on the background and mm -hmm. um but that kind of hand kind of swooping down into that mirror frame um you said the hand on the right kind of bothers you but that little hand kind of sticking uh, out into the into the thing that's a little that bothers me a little bit but i get it um it's a it's a nice little moment of a kid checking themselves out after getting face painted um and i know i've taken a thousand pictures very similar like this to of my kids as they were getting their face painted so it's a great it's a great thing you'll look back on, you know, when your kids are older. Oh, remember that time we did the tiger makeup? So just documentary wise, um, great job, you know, for taking yeah. the photo. Um, I think as you advance into it, you know, let's figure out why the quality is a little bit low and maybe back up a little bit and give us a little more context. But yeah. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Um, you know, it's a photo is better than no photo of, of this moment. Am I right? Exactly right. No, no. Yeah, yeah. There's absolutely. A, there's a, yeah, one of my favorite quotes is, you know, you miss 100% of the shots you don't take. Wayne Gretzky, exactly Michael right. Scott. Oh. <laughs> That's so. exactly right. No, I mean, and like I said, it, if I was scrolling through a photo album, 
20 years after this happened and I saw this photo and I remembered, oh my gosh, there's my daughter with this face makeup. I would love this, right? And that's, in, right. in theory, that's what it's all about. It, you know, oh my gosh, there's my dog again. Hey, cut it out. Go away. Come here. He just wants to say hi. <laughs> he wants dinner is what he wants. He wants food. Uh, she wants to eat. Fair yeah. enough, fair enough. So anyway, yeah. Okay. Well, cool. Diane, thanks so much again for submitting this. Really cool to see. Um, we're going to move on, though, since uh, I'm trying to keep us on track here. Um, this next photo comes from another regular submitter, Lock Lee. Um, and before we dive into this, um, one thing I, I want to just, on a personal note, one thing I want to say about this is um, this, this, this personally brings back a lot of nostalgia for me um, towards the beginning of my career. Um, you know, my first mentor in the photography industry or the wedding photography space, I should say, um, this guy named Scott Nelson. He kind of took me under his wing and taught me, uh, pretty much the basics of what I know, um, for wedding photography. And he was an old school photographer. You know, he, he was, you know, he was huge in the nineties and he really liked to do this where he would overlay like a texture, um, and it's kind of lost. It, I haven't seen photographers do this in probably 10 plus years. Um, and I think it was a trend that kind of <laughs> died that was popular for a while. You okay there, buddy? Yeah, I'm going to mute myself and call for a lot. All right. Okay. No worries. Sorry. No worries. I'll, I'll keep talking. But yeah, no. So um, you're not muted. <laughs> <laughs> you are oh man oh uh, so anyway so it's kind of a really fun throwback for me to see you know a, a photo processed this way um and done so well in my opinion too so so kudos to Locke for for doing something and besides that what a fun image of just her expression the location um the shape of her body the veil flowing in the in the wind um I'm wondering. I'm wondering if this actually was shot in Paris. It looks like it was, but I'm wondering if this was shot in, you know, in front of the Eiffel Tower. Or if this is just like you know, photoshopped or something. I, I really would like to know. I don't know. Yeah. Uh, I don't know maybe um, our, is our friend Stefan watching? He grew up in Paris. Maybe he could tell us if, if he knows this spot. Um, yeah, I, I know what you mean about those overlays, like that add that texture and. Um, yeah. That was a big thing for a while. Um, and I, I still see it every now and then. And I think, oh, that's kind of cool. You know, they're kind of a throwback to, um, you know, to the, you know, well, maybe a decade or so ago. And, and it kind of is visually interesting. Um, but I think you're right. The, the, everything about this, this bride is amazing. Her expression. I love how her arms appear, the veil flying. I think all of that looks really great. And the light on her looks super good as well. So I think they did a great job. Uh, with that for sure for sure yeah i mean um it looks like it was just natural light you know just really uh put, putting you know facing or having the subject face towards the light a little bit of that hard light um but it works you know yeah um, no it works great and uh i i see in the comments stefan says yes that looks real to him so he would know he's probably roller skated by there a hundred times so that's cool okay um okay the um yeah i just think it's it's great. It's a nice um, environmental kind of shot, you know, to put her next to the tower. Pretty cool. Yeah. So Locke did comment. He said, yes, is the real tower. And yes, he added the texture in post. He got lucky with the natural light on this shoot. Um, very cool. Very cool. Um, oh, you know, cool. I didn't know, though. It could be the Eiffel Tower in Vegas, though. Could be in, in, the, in, the one in <laughs> Vegas also. There is. I was actually just there um, uh, on... <clears throat> Uh, what's today today? Oh, I was there on s Friday and, um, not to brag, but I, okay. I played some slots at the, at the hotel. Um, and I, I hit it big. I won $16 and 25 cents. So no kidding, bro. Yeah. So uh, that's uh, that's spectacular. Just, yeah. Living large high, yeah, exactly. high roller. Exactly. So hell just, yeah. Just, but anyway, getting back to it though this is the perfect example of one of those images that like we were talking about earlier where it's like, damn, this is so good. Like, how do we, how do we critique this? <laughs> you know? Um, cause you know, my first inst, my only, th maybe th that's the thing that's bothering me a little bit is if you look at the bottom right hand of the frame, the veil is getting cut off a little. And, um, it, it's not enough to be like, oh, yeah, that ruins the image. But maybe that's something I would recommend that we, you know, if like we talked about earlier, either cut it off a lot or just or don't cut it off at all. You know, show the whole thing. Right. right. Um, maybe a little more space on that side over there would be good. 
Right, right, exactly. Um, but yeah, I would it's, like to see it's a tough one. Yeah, I would like to see maybe without the texture, right? Just to say, like, what does it look like without that sure. kind of texture applied, or maybe just lessened a little bit, toned down a tiny bit, just to get, still give it a little a little feel to it, but maybe not quite so much. But no, it's great, great image. I really like it a lot. Gotcha. Yeah. Um, yeah, it's, it's a t tough one, man. You, you got to so, What can you just submit like a bad photo once, so it's like easy for us just to be like, "Oh yeah, this sucks. This is what you need to do better." <laughs> yeah. No, I'm just messing with you, lock. Hey, thank you so much uh, for submitting this. It's always such a pleasure seeing your photos. So um, that would be the only thing I could add, though. I mean, you, you really nailed this. So good job. Um, okay, we're gonna go ahead and move on. Uh, this next photo comes from photographer Bridget Huss. And Bridget uh, added some comments and she said that she normally likes to use off camera flash to create some dramatic effect in these type of portraits. But the sun coming through the window was so bright and direct and the red from the couch was such a great pop of color that she decided to embrace and really celebrate the available light. Um, yeah, and this I would, is I would agree. Yeah. amazing. Mm hmm. Yeah, I'll go ahead and chat about this real fast. This really caught my eye when looking at the photos that, that were in. I just, I love the way the light's coming in, how it's coming across the dress and really giving some texture in there across the, the bling of the shoes, the way it's popping on the red. Um, this is such a, like a like a storytelling moment but at the same time, just super well lit from the, from that sunlight. And, and kudos to the photographer for putting them, I don't know if they were in that spot, or did they find the spot and ask the bride to come right. over and sit there? Because that that looks great. Um, what I like to maybe see cropped in and not so much negative space on top, probably. Um, just a little bit more, you mm -hmm. know, just crop down on it a little bit more. Um, but yeah, that's great. I love it. I even love the little bit of light coming across her eye is really beautiful. Um, maybe it's a little highlighty, a little hot right there on the dress part in the middle, but that doesn't bother me that much. It's, it looks great. Yeah, absolutely. I I would agree with you on the top of the image, maybe crop it a little bit tighter or just, um, you know, just the crop on that. I I personally would like to see a little bit more light on her face uh, just because, you know, you have such a strong highlight, you know, where on her dress that it's really pulling your attention. Um, now my dog's barking. Um, Liam, hey, come here, buddy. Come here. Um, you know, you have such a strong highlight that your eye is being drawn to the dress. Um, so I'd like to see a little bit more detail in her face. I agree with that. I'll take that. Like, even if you had her turn just a little bit and, you know, look that way for, you know, maybe, maybe use that same light, but have her, you know, fix an earring or something as she's just looking out, you know, and let that light hit across her face or something. That would be a nice, you know, a follow-up photo to the, to the fix the shoe photo or something. But yeah, right. um, great job to see this light, right? A lot of times you, you would just, like she said, off camera flash it or um, just bounce it or something to, um, you know, to light this, to light this particular part of the day. But yes. instead she found this beautiful light and put her, put her client in there and, and made a really, really stunning image. And I'm glad this has become the dog show. Um, so <laughs> I know, right? We got here. the dogs just barking. They want to say hi. They want to contribute. <laughs> yeah. Liam. Yeah. Hey, don't know that. None of that. All right. Um, well, that that that's just my yeah, that's just the only thing I would say. It's just a little bit more light, maybe somehow. Um, otherwise, the photo gets a little bit too lost, a little too abstract. So, okay, let's go ahead and move on. Let's see here. Uh, this next photo comes from Radon Burton, another regular contributor. Um, this picture, the balance of the natural light and the flash on this kid is spectacular. They did a great job in balancing that ambient light with some, some off camera flash. Um, and that, that's not the easiest thing to do, you know, so they, they did a really good job in that. Um, I'm guessing it's a senior portrait or, uh, you know, something. So, um, I love the, the sunlight back there. It just, it's a well done, um, balance of off camera light and, and natural light. Yeah, one thing I that's something I always really do appreciate about Radon's photos is, um, you know, you you have she she does a really good job, of, you know, really creating some clean imagery, and uh, this is definitely no exception to that. Uh, yeah, and even how like 
you know, even the attention to detail, how she frames him like in between the trees in the foreground and the background. So, you know, his head's not getting cut off or anything like that. Liam, I need you to chill out, dude. Um, that's, uh, you know, very, very well done for sure. I, well, let me ask you a question. Do you think the, um, the shadow from his pen on his shirt, bo it bothers you at all? Do you think it's distracting or do you think it's not really that big of a deal? Uh, I'm nitpicking here because it's a good, it's such a good photo, you know? Yeah. You're, nit you're nitpicking, bro. That doesn't yeah. bother me. Um, okay. I can see why, like, if you're looking for something to say, if I was going to clean this up after the fact, uh, sure. Maybe you take that out, but at the same time, you know, yeah, uh, I don't mind it. I, I'm curious to know, like, is like the context of this is it a senior photo if so is the kid like a drawer is he like sketching something or or what so maybe a little less camera aware i'd like maybe like to see um and, okay. and really if it's a if it's a senior portrait like what are they doing like what do they like to do um and so maybe something like, like maybe the next one in the series is him sketching or something but gosh okay. the 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 ambience great um yeah i like it like you said how it's framed between the trees yeah, it's a nice, it's a really lovely, lovely picture. But no, that yeah. shadow of the pen does not bother me. Okay, just curious. Yeah, I, I just, it just kind of caught my attention really quick. And I was like, what is that? Oh, it's a shadow from the pen. Okay. Uh, at first I yeah. thought it was like a yeah. stain or something. So, um, he spilled right a Coke on his shirt right before. Yeah, it's cool. <laughs> exactly. Yeah, I mean, there, there's nothing really, I think, there's nothing wrong with the photo at all. I mean, it's, it's the way it is. I mean, it's super clean, got the nice background bokeh, uh, really, really good light, solid image that a client's going to be incredibly happy with. So thank you, Redon. Yeah. And you know, I also that. I, in, um, in photos like this, one thing I see that a lot of, well, I shouldn't say it's a mistake, but I think about lens choice and, you know, if you were going to shoot this with, um, you know, a, a wider lens, then you wouldn't really compress the background so much. And, and it looks like that they did a nice job in, in even choosing the lens to make this picture with that. So that's good. So yeah. yeah, anyway, that's the last thought there. Absolutely. Absolutely. Cool deal. All right, let's go ahead and move on to our next photo. This next photo comes from Kurt Walton. Um, this was shot with a 7,200 and a 200 watt flash and a small softbox. Hmm. Okay. Well, first of all, I love these glasses and I want a pair of those glasses. So Kurt, let me know where she got those. Cause I think I would look sweet in those glasses. So that's awesome. You would. Um, it's like pretty dope. It, it, yeah. Thank you. I appreciate that. Um, it looks like it's like a whimsical, like she has a costume or something on, like these are these fairy wings or something. Um, yeah. 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 It's a, it's a fun moment. I think she's like peeking out like, a, like behind the trees. Um, I'm guessing those are cars back there that are kind of, Kind of bulk it out um, because of the the long lens. Um, so right. maybe in the future, look for a way where you can shoot it with a cleaner background, you know, with just the trees or just an open space, and and because that distracts me a little bit, like which I'm guessing are those are uh, maybe they're not cars, but whatever that is, kind of behind her is distracting me a little bit. Um, and maybe also the tree. There's a lot of tree there, um, and I get maybe we want to where she's peeking out behind a tree, which is awesome, but I don't need to see half the tree to get that right. same kind of vibe. I'd rather see either more of her or, or um, you know, a little more, a little more space around or something, but I don't need the tree so much of the tree. Yeah, no, I would, I, I kind of actually um, felt the same way when I first saw this image. I think it's just, I'd like to see, cause you know, you have this very apparent like outfit or costume or these wings or whatever. It looks like they're wings, like angel wings or something. And you know, I see those and I'm like, Oh, well, uh, I want to know more about this. I want to see what's happening here. So, you know, I, I think the, um, yeah, her peeking around the tree is a cute idea, but I want to know more. I want to see what's going on. And I'm obviously, I'm sure he, you know, there's a lot more photos in this, the set that he captured. Um, I do feel like though, you know, the, the lens selection was absolutely a good choice because he was able to, um, at least blur out that very distracting background. So that was absolutely solid on his end. So kudos to you, Kurt, for doing that. Um, but that, that, yeah, I think you, you know, I don't really don't have much to add to that. I think you hit the nail on the head. The lights seem, it seems to be pretty good. Um, mm -hmm. You know, I'm seeing a little bit of like a, a hot spot on her tooth that you could, that you could get rid of. It's a little distracting, Yeah. Um, but that's so, you know, so small. Um, yeah. 
Yeah, That's I mean, there's some reflections in the glasses. You can see the light, but the light on her looks like it's well done. So yeah, I mean, it's it's a it's a a, a nice photo of her. I want to see more of her. I want to see the the outfit. I want to know what's going on. Absolutely, absolutely. Cool deal. All right, let's go ahead and move on. This next photo comes from Ellie B. Chico, uh, and she used uh, Canon R5 with a 1635. Um, used a 400 watt light with a magmod reflector and the XL magsphere um, on a cheetah oh. stand. In the back, she's using a uh, Geekoto GT200 with an amber bag gel with magsphere to warm up the scene. And the sky was warmed up a little bit in post. Okay. Yeah. All right. You want to go or you want me to start? Uh, I'll, I'll start just to spice things it. up. So for starters, uh, you Do know, it. I love, I love cars. I love trucks and all that stuff. So, um, this is always, no. the kind of thing that's really, yeah. Right. <laughs> this is always something that's really, uh, <laughs> I always love seeing these kind of photos. Um, my, uh, you know, when on a wedding day and it looks like this was on a wedding day, you know, a lot of times there's things that aren't, that are beyond your control, such as the location. Right. Um, and f I kind of get a little distracted by all the golf carts in the background. I'm not saying it necessarily breaks the image, but I would have probably try to put maybe a little more thought into changing my angle. So you could maybe get those out of the way. So I, I can see what Ellie was doing and she was trying to frame her in between the window of the, the truck. Um, so kudos to you for that. However, probably what I would have done if this were me again, artist subjective, um, I would have gotten a little bit lower, gone a little bit more camera left. That way you can shoot from a lower angle. So you get a little bit more sky and you get rid of a lot of those distracting elements in the foreground, such as those golf carts, uh, the, 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 the roof of the car and the background on the left side of the frame. Um, and all of those things. Um, that way too, you know, you might actually be able to see a little bit more of the truck as well. Um, and another nitpicky thing, I, I'm not super stoked on the, the, the veil coming towards the camera. Um, and the only reason I say that is I do think it takes away a little bit from the truck. You know, it does cover a lot of the truck. Like, I want to see more of the wheels. Like, those chrome wheels look super dope. Um, and I know the owner wants to probably see those, too. Um, show off a little bit more of the body of the vehicle. Yeah. Yeah. No, I agree with you on that. I was thinking the same thing. I like how she framed the the subject uh, in, the, in the window of the truck. I think that was a super cool idea. Um, but at what cost? I want, like, you yeah. right? I want to see over a little bit. I want to... Um, yeah, the golf carts in the back are, are killing me, especially like I can see like that guy's nine iron right there or whatever that is. Um, um, <laughs> the the lighting on her is great. I love that. Um, yes. But to get a little lower is, would be super cool. It also looks like this thing is shot in like F28 or something. Like everything is in focus. Like the palm trees in the back are in focus. The 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 pearls or the beading on the, on the veil seem to be in focus in the front. Um, and so there's just a lot of, a lot of in focus stuff in, at least the way I'm seeing it, um, that maybe, maybe a little bit shallower depth of field might enhance your subject more and, and, and blur out some of that distracting stuff in the background. Absolutely. Yeah. Um, cool. We well, yeah, got nothing really more to but add. I will um, say I, yeah. Oh, sorry. No, no. What were you saying? Yeah. I, I was going to say, I like the contrast between the blue truck and the orange of the sky. You know, those yes. colors mm -hmm. are, are, are definitely complementary and look great against each other. So great job, you know, you, doing that. That was a really good call. Yeah, absolutely. Um, so really cool image, Ellie. And you know me, I love seeing cars and seeing cars incorporated into um, images. And I actually, I did a, I did some photos with uh danny recently and my nsx and i waiting to share those but she wanted to edit them a little bit so i'm waiting to get those back so danny if you're watching i i want to share those really badly so get on it no, i'm just kidding <laughs> um <laughs> just 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 a just a shout out you know just putting the pressure putting the pressure on 
Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, Ellie, thank you so much. In a, in okay. a very subtle way, too. Yeah, in a very, very, very subtle, subtle way. You know, you just, pleasure. you know, very subtle. You know me, I'm all, I'm very discreet. Um, <laughs> okay, moving on. Uh, this next photo comes from uh, just some guy that's okay. He's not really that special. Uh, Scott Tibbles. And uh, yeah. he, did, he did provide a behind the scenes photo as well with this, which we'll share in a second. But um, he was shooting solo, um, he had a. 200 watt strobe set up behind the couple on a stand. Uh, he started with the grid, but really wasn't getting the spread he wanted. So he went with the bare flash behind him. Um, and then he had a groomsman hold up a 24 inch softbox over the top um, with a 300 watt strobe shot with, at a, with the 50 millimeter lens. Um, and this is what he got. Cool. Yeah. I love the, um, I love the sky. It looks great. And, and, they seem exposed for a little bit of a hot spot on the on the face, you know, of the of the guy. But you know, that, that's something you could just kind of probably take out and post real fast if if you needed to. But um, one thing that that I always and I always see this after I shoot the picture too is that spill on the ground. And sometimes I'm like, oh man, how can I get rid of that spill? You know, that's lighting up the the grass underneath them. And and maybe that's something you like. Maybe it's something that you just don't think about, but. Sometimes after I after I do a shot just like this, I think, ah, oh, I wish I would have gotten rid of the spill. Um, whether I'm, I'm using some kind of barn door or something like that, or some grids to really keep that that light from from just spraying all over the the ground. Great balance of the of the sky with them, so they could really pop. And it was a great job to put them behind those trees, right? Because right. had you put them in a, in a brighter spot, then you'd lose that cool rim light, and that would go away. So good good way to to put them behind a darker place when you're rim lighting them nice job on that yeah definitely definitely um the the separation yeah like just just to echo that you know having that separation uh with using the light was a really good call um you know if, if you're gonna pull, place them in front of that dark background they're easily gonna get lost especially wearing that black black suit um so that was very smart um my only suggestion maybe would be to just tone down the the power of the flash just a little bit yep. yeah just because you, you start getting a little some some slightly blown out highlights especially in our hair yep and so you could do that either by pulling the flash back more uh, or powering mm -hmm. it down or, or whatever but yeah i love i love the rim light and i do this rim light shot all the time it's like my go-to um, and so you just kind of have to figure out, you know, once you do it more and more and more, you know, you just kind of figure out where the sweet spot is for that light. Definitely. Um, and uh, here was the behind the scenes photo that he provided. Um, so you can clearly see the uh, the groomsmen um, holding the, the flash. That's awesome. Sean, do you ever um, get groomsmen or bridesmaids to help you out in a photo shoot like that? All the time. All the time. Yeah, because I, you know, I shoot solo quite a bit actually, and uh, if I have an idea for, um, you know, if I have an idea for a photo that is gonna require me to, um, to do something that that won't allow me to use my light stand, like for example, if we're on a bridge or something, I need like the light held over the bridge. Oh yeah, absolutely. I have no problem asking a groomsman. I mean, at the end of the day. You know, they only want the best for the couple. So someone, of course, is going to be super um, happy to help them with that. And one thing I also find kind of interesting here, now I'm looking at the behind the scenes photo, is that it looks like this is a painter stick or a window washing stick. <laughs> now I got to zoom in. Yeah, it's... It uh, might be. Yeah, kind of looks like that, huh? Yeah, it absolutely is. Yeah. I don't think it's yeah, a piece of photography equipment. Look, whatever works, bro. And it's probably, I guarantee you, that's probably 20 bucks at like your Ace Hardware as opposed to it would be um, $200 at, um, you know, your camera store. So good job on that. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Um, super cool. All right. Well, thank you, Scott. Um, let's go ahead and move on. Um, this next photo comes from a local photographer, at least local to me, uh, Mark Creary. Uh, nice, nice photojournalism moment that we've captured here. Mm -hmm. um, this is at a venue I actually shoot at quite often. I love the I love the moment, right? It's a great moment. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, they're having fun. That the, the bride's just having the time of her life. Um, yeah, I wish their eyes were open, but um, 
other than that, you know, it's fun moment. I like the kids smiling. It's very engaging. All right. Very photojournalism, very photojournalistic. And I love that. And you can tell, you know, he's just running backwards right in front of them. And, uh, and I've done that a thousand times. So one of these days I'm going to trip as I'm running backwards, but knock on wood, it hasn't happened yet. Um, but yeah, no, great, great moment. And oftentimes I, I think to myself, um, yes, I would like more space on the left-hand side, right? I'd like to see those folks over there. But when you're running backwards as they're coming out, you know, you're just, you know, doing your best not to fall and, and capture the moment and all that kind of stuff. I would say moment trumps composition or I, maybe not composition, but m getting a great moment can overcome other technical aspects that, that maybe aren't quite there. But this is a great moment. Yeah, it really is. And um, the thing I like about it, too, is, you know, you have, you know, a lot of people interacting and engaging with them, too, like, especially the kids, you know, you have the, like, the, if you look at the groom's left shoulder, you know, you see that the little girl, the two little girls there that are clearly in the moment, and they're laughing, and you have the little boys on the right. Um, so really, um, you know, really solid, um, solid that you were able to capture that. Um, you know, I'll, I'll forgive him a little bit because it is such a candid moment and it is a moment obviously where he's probably having to, you know, think quick on his feet and focus and walk backwards. Um, you know, it, it definitely is a little out of focus and you can, you know, you can tell by looking at their faces, it's a little blurry, it's a little soft. Um, and you look at her bouquet and the bouquet, that's clearly where the camera was trying to focus was, um, on the bouquet. Yeah. So in this particular situation, um, I would actually almost, um, intentionally blur the bouquet a little bit so it's not as noticeable mm. that you missed your focus, right? Um, yeah. That That's kind of what I – so like if you were submitting this to competition or something, that's probably what I would uh, personally do in post-production. But um, yeah, such a it's such a fun moment. I mean, you know, she's – they're clearly, you know, super stoked, having a great time. Um I would yep. say that the eyes closed doesn't necessarily bother me as much because, you know, they're having petals thrown at them. And I think that just adds to the story a little bit. But um, this is one of those photos that the the client is going to love so much. I, I could yep. see them blowing this Hands up and, and framing it. Absolutely. And, you know, this is one of the storytelling moments of the day, right? This is this is the end of the day, the end of their beautiful wedding. And so, uh, yeah, they're going to love it. You know, they love it. I love it, but yeah, it's cool. They're, they're going to go crazy. Yeah, absolutely. Um, okay. Cool deal. Um, well, thank you, Mark, for submitting that as always. Um, he always likes to submit photojournalism moments and I, I can really appreciate that because I love, you know, love. Yeah, I love that. Um, okay. So this next photo comes from Chris, just Chris, just Chris, just Chris, just Chris. I love that. Um, yeah. So, uh, a couple things. Uh, the color shift is a little weird, a little red, right? So mm -hmm. I don't know if that's intentional and that's how they edit it or, or is that just, you know, maybe there was some, a red wall behind the photographer and it's just reflecting back red light on the, on the subject. Um, I love the, the bokeh and the, the it's a great smile of your subject. A really nice, I'm guessing maybe a senior portrait or, or something like that. Um, I think that's really well done. I think just the, the skin tones, the, the pink needs to be dialed out a little bit. Yeah. And, you know, I think that's probably like you, you mentioned more of a, a stylistic choice or a personal choice um, with the processing. And I mean, honestly, like I see these super, I, I see a lot of photographers um, that are pretty successful and have these just these photos that they just completely destroy the, the skin tones and the, like, you know, they're all orange or they're all green. Mm -hmm. um, so it's, it's definitely a trend and I, I'm not going to fault the photographer for that because at the end of the day, you know, you, whatever you could do to keep yourself a little bit um, unique is, um, you know, is definitely something that needs to be celebrated. The, I would say, you know, that aside, you know, the processing aside, I think for me, what I would like to see is a little bit more detail Um on, in her eyes and on the light on her face because you have a really yeah. strong highlight on her on the top of her head that's competing with the light on her face so i would like to see a little bit more you know either you know bring up the exposure on just her face by using the address brush tool um, add a little bit of fill light add a reflector um 
because again, as I mentioned earlier in this video, your or, or you know, or critiques that your eye will generally go to the brightest part of the scene. And in this case, it's the top left corner of the frame and it's the top of her head. Um, so I think it's overpowering the light on her face a little bit. Yep, I think you're right. Just a, just a little kick of light, just a little of, of fill would be great. And like you said, either a reflector or, you know, just a soft box right there uh, would, would really kind of kick this up a notch for sure. Totally. totally. Um, cool deal. All right. Well, um, yeah, that's pretty much it. Pretty, pretty straightforward. Pretty easy. Thank you, Chris. Uh, really solid image. I love the bokeh. Um, really, really, yeah. really, really, really cool. Um, okay. Let's go yeah, ahead and move on. on. Who's this next photo from? Let's see here. Oh, okay. Uh, this next photo is from a photographer, uh, that I'm familiar with. Her name is Gretchen Troop. Um, she's on my, she's on my team. Um, yeah, I know Gretchen. I've worked with Gretchen before. She's an amazing person. Oh, you have? Where'd you, where'd you, uh, amazing why does she know you? But yeah, we, work? um, we did a wedding in, uh, Denver, um, at the, uh, I want to say it was at the Ritz Carlton in, in Denver before. It was a, we had a oh. great little time together. Met, Didn't yeah. realize that. Didn't realize that. That's cool. Um, yeah. Okay. I'm just kind of digesting this photo, taking it all in. Um, she told me specifically to be very harsh on her and not hold back. No, she did not. <laughs> Yeah, what All a right. cool location. Um, what a cool location. This yeah, gives yeah. me like Wyoming vibes, uh, um, like you know Mormon Road, like those old barns and everything. I, I'm assuming this wasn't shot there, but it, it definitely gives me those vibes. Um, looks like she used a 200 watt light uh, with a full CTO um, behind it. Um, the light uh, pointing. Oh, it was behind the couple pointing at the bar. Okay, so that's where we're getting that little bit of that um, that orange glow from yeah and so i'm curious about that choice like um obviously the light on them from the front looks great the exposure and i can't tell maybe if i look closely has she lit the couple also or is it just this light behind them that's kind of giving them a little separation with the barn and i think that's an interesting choice because you see this a lot if you're going to try and silhouette the couple right you point uh, a light at that at the barn and you know you try and and silhouette them like that but it's just i guess her way of of separating them a bit from the from the barn it's a like a kind of a cool little look there i dig it and and again that that complementary colors with that orange there and then the blue sky looks good together i love this location mm -hmm. uh yeah that's that's a cool photo for sure yeah you know i think uh having that orange uh, i don't know her you know um, her intentions, but, uh, I would have guessed, yeah, maybe just to create a little bit of separation between them and the barn because the barn is, you know, uh, a little is, you know, you have all those lines kind of intersecting and everything. So it could be a mm -hmm. little, um, a little busy. Um, she, she commented and basically, uh, was just, uh, she used it just to warm up the bar a little bit, uh, the barn, excuse me. So, um, yeah, yeah. my, my kind of, I, I think here, you know, from an artistic standpoint, it's, it's a couple things I would change, uh, for starters, I would have the couple move just slightly to the right because you have these, mm -hmm. these lines that are intersecting are like pointed down and they're, they're bringing your eye to, they want to bring your eye to the center. Right. And it's just the couple slightly off center from that. So I would move that couple, um, just slightly again, camera right. Uh, that would be my, just my biggest thing. And then the other is, is the, the hand placement. Um, it's a little, I'm not really sure what they're doing. The hand placement's a little awkward. Like you have, yeah, it's a little awkward. Yeah. It's a little weird. It's like, he's doing this. I don't know what's going on. So, um, that would be something I probably would, before you take the photo, just p take another extra second to analyze and, and look at the whole scene and you know posing is one of those those things for for me included kind of comes secondary sometimes because i'm so focused on getting the composition right the lighting right and the you know the angle um and just the overall creativity of the image that sometimes the uh uh the, the posing you know kind of falls behind a little bit and you know the the hand placement is so important um so do, yeah, it's just, it's just a little awkward is, is, is my point is you have some awkwardness going on with the hand. So maybe take that extra second to do something a little bit different there. 
yeah. The the other thing I would I would like to see maybe, and maybe she did this in, in another in another take, would be to kind of get low and really kind of shoot through some of this grass and to kind of put it as like a foreground, um, you know, kind of blur out the grass in the front, kind of shoot through okay. that and, and kind of give it a little layer of of softness in the front there as shooting through the grass and kind of see what that looks like. Um, mm-hmm. or, and maybe even pull out wide. Like, is this is this just this cool old barn in the middle of nowhere, right? Or is it, is, are there 14 other barns next to it? I don't know. Um, but it's such an interesting location. I want to know a little bit more about the scene. Um, yeah. And also, like you said about the hands, the hands are really red. And sometimes I bet I it was pulled out. And so maybe their hands were red. Um, and so um, I always try and go in if I notice that and just kind of, you know, select the hands and drag that red slider down a little bit, and try and try and get that out a little bit. Yeah, absolutely. Um, but I, what a what an awesome location. This is super cool. This barn, yeah, I love obviously, it. this barn has to be at least ten years old. <laughs> yeah, it does. It looks no. I mean, it's super cool. And I wonder, like, what's inside the barn? I don't know. Right. What's in the box? Zombies. <laughs> no, open the box. <laughs> uh, well, hey Gretchen, thanks for submitting this. What a cool photo, and it was really fun to talk about this. Um, we're almost done. Yeah. We got a few more photos left. So this. Um, comes from one of my workshop alumni. This comes from Aaron Guzman. Uh, oh, actually, before that, here's a behind the scenes photo that Gretchen submitted. So um, there she is. Looks like she's got she's a so bunch of. Fun. Yeah, she is. She looks like she's got a bunch of like those sticky things on her legs from like uh, those plants. I don't know what those are, but. Um, oh yeah, yeah she trapes them through the weeds. Yeah. Yeah, she had a she had a lot of fun. I can tell. But anyway, um, so yes, next photo. This comes from Aaron Guzman, one of my workshop alumni. Uh, he uh, looks like a senior shot, and uh, he was in a field of broken clay pigeons at a gun club. Uh, he positioned the client with the with his back towards the sun. He cro- did, shot this with a cross light setup using a 600-watt strobe with a 45-degree reflector at 10 o'clock and another strobe with a 22-inch beauty dish at 4 o'clock. Um, you shot with a Canon R5. Um, dude, this is cool. What a sick location. Um, have you ever gone clay shooting before? Yeah, it's for fun. sure. It's fun. Um, I have not. However, my son, uh, was on the trap team, um, for uh, two practices. And so we went out, um, and, and watched him shoot and It's really cool. Um, and where I live, it's pretty kind of a big deal. You can actually get college scholarships, uh, for, for trap shooting, um, which is kind of cool. Uh, but oh, I, and I do a lot of like kind of, kind of cool lit scene or portraits. And so I'm really, I'm literally loving this image a lot. Very cool. Very cool. Yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah. This is definitely, I love, I love the fact that he used or he made the decision to uh, use a rim light because it creates a little bit more separation, a little bit more of a 3d mm-hmm. effect. And it really makes the image pop. Um, let's see, I'm just yeah. Looking. If I, if I had a little critique in sure. the front, I would maybe kind of, it's a little hot on these on the, in the foreground, right? I'll maybe okay. dial that down just a little bit, burn that in, and, and really tone that down. I realize that that light's probably coming from his from his flash, but I might kind of just tone that down a little bit. Maybe make those oranges pop a little bit more to go against that blue sky. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, I think just the the angle in which he shot it and and the the clouds and it just is really well done. And uh, yeah, I think it's awesome. Yeah. Um... Again, another one of those examples of a photo where it's like, well, shoot, what? How do we critique an image that's pretty damn, pretty damn good? Um, I'm kind of I'm looking at trying to look yeah, at and, and, looking at hand placement, foot placement, lighting. It's one point. I mean, it definitely tells a story, right? Like the mm-hmm. the the crushed clays definitely lend to the and like how far back does that go? It looks like it's forever. You know what I mean? That, that's just right. really cool looking. And I well, love I th- the ultra wide angle. Yeah, absolutely. And you I know, think to really give it to, to really make it pop. Yeah, to- totally. And, you know, I think that's why he chose that low angle, right? Was to accentuate how many mm-hmm. um, cl- broken clays there were to really give it like a sense of just, you know, vastness. So. Yeah, absolutely. It's fantastic. Yeah. Super cool. Um, yeah, I mean, besides maybe Tony down the highlights and some of those clays, not really much I would add either. So, um, really solid. I think this is some of your best work you've ever submitted, Aaron. So kudos to you. 
Um, nice job, man. Yeah. Okay. Almost through the end. Oh, and here's the behind the scenes shot just to show that, yes, it was, in fact, real. <laughs> so, um, next photo comes from Austin Alvarez. Um, used. Let's take a, a look. Oh, and he used uh, one of Geekodo's new softboxes to light this photo. Oh, cool. I love Geekodo softboxes. Yeah, they're they're pretty great. I like how they, you know, they fold up flat. Um, so they're, they're so really flat. It's crazy. Yeah, they're really yeah, easy I to travel it. with. Mm -hmm. um, I like this photo a lot. Um, I think that I like her pose. Um, mm -hmm. And I like her shimmery shirt kind of mimics the lights behind her, which looks really cool. You know, like it's those little circles of light. It's like it almost just goes across there and then is repeated that pattern on her shirt. So great job to the photographer. I don't know if that was accidental. Like, oh, man, um, like I want to stand you in front of these lights because your shimmery shirt is going to mimic those or that was just accidental. But but that was really good. The way she's sort of placed in between these two purple things. Um, I don't know what those are. Is this like a, a merry-go-round? I don't know. It looks know, like it's it, yeah, some. It looks cool. Yeah. I'm not sure what it is, but um, I don't know yeah. if this was intentional or not, or if he was just on location and he like noticed this, but I love that he was able to find something that complements the color of her shirt. Right. So like you see those lights in the background, mm -hmm. they're complementing the, the sequins on her, on her, you know, shirt, which is really neat to see. Yeah. That's really great. And I, I even like how the, the, those arches of her, sort of, lights with the purple around them kind of lead you into her, you know, mm -hmm. and, and her hair is kind of that, that same similar purple color as those lights leading into it. I mean, that, that's pretty cool. Nice job. Nice vision. there, seeing that. And I'm going to, I'm going to assume that you did that on purpose. And then that was awesome. Yeah. Um, the only two things I'm seeing that, uh, might be a, a little questionable, uh, for starters, if you look, um, at the very bottom of the frame, it looks like maybe there's like someone there that's just out of focus a little bit, mm -hmm. um, which I, I noticed. So I would, I would, you know, clone that out. And then maybe it's just on my screen. My screen's pretty big, but um, if you're looking at the two lights by her head on the left and right side of her head, there's like a, a pinkish red ring um, mm -hmm. around. And I, I don't know what's causing that. Oh, there's a dog. Um, I don't know what's causing that, but yep. it's just something super minor, super technical that, I just want to point out in case it bugs, you know, Austin as well. Yeah, I saw those two and I'm not sure what they are. Like, I don't, I don't know, but overall, like, that's great. And you're right. I would Photoshop, I'd clone out that little, that little person on the bottom there or whatever that is. And, um, but yeah, no, I think it's nice. I think it's really well done. The light is well done. It's a great, great image. Definitely. Definitely. Um, cool. Austin. Thank you so much for submitting this really, really solid photo. Um, we're, got, mm -hmm. we're down to our last two. Uh, this next photo comes from Alyssa, um, Aly Alyssa Poland, and the uh, the little or the little snippet she wanted to add to this was, uh, we we were starting to run back to the cars as it you know started to pour down, and she figured you know well if my gear is gonna get ruined I might as well get a good shot so she threw a flash behind mm -hmm. him and told them to kiss, um, you know one of the things that, uh, in my opinion just adds so much to the photo is the fact that the dog's there <laughs> i mean look it's yeah it it's dog night right perfect yeah right yeah i it's great um i really i really like that a lot um the dog and the dog looks happy and he's smiling and he's i, I like the rim light around the dog that looks really cool um mm -hmm. and so it looks like the light is coming from the side is that right because those drops on the right are really lit more than the drops on the left um, but yet there's rib light behind them. So I'm trying to figure out where that light's coming from because well, definitely there's to, a light behind them. Yeah. According to her, I mean, the light was just placed behind him. Probably what might be happening is like the flash is behind him, but the, the head is slightly toward like pointed towards the right. Of the oh frame. yeah. Um, that's, that yeah. would be my guess. Um, so, um, that's probably why you're seeing a little bit more on the right side. Uh, I think Could what be. you said earlier uh, about backing the flash up is going to make the biggest impact here because um, you do get a little bit of that uneven spread of light. 
And you probably all you already know what I'm gonna say. My biggest critique is that the veil is just super blown out, and it's it's quite distracting. And you know that's something that's unrecoverable at that point. You know, way too many bright highlights. Um, so backing that up would be uh, beneficial. But I mean, seriously, kudos to Alyssa for being able to like be in the moment and capture something like so quickly. Right. And, and like she said, like, I'm going to throw my flash on there and run to the car and we're going to make this picture real fast. Let's do it. Let's go, go, go. We, I, we've both been in that situation a thousand times. You're like, let's go. And you just, I'm one yeah. more thing. And then you're doing it. And to come out with this, great job. Yeah. And honestly, what I would probably do in her situation, if like, if she looked at this photo and, um, was like, oh my gosh, this is a portfolio shot. I have to throw this in, but you know, I want to make it perfect. Honestly, probably what I would do is I would just Photoshop out the veil all altogether. Um, I'd Photoshop it out, or I would, uh, re you know, I'm not big on this. Uh, I'm, you know, I going back to my photojournalism roots, but in this situation, I might Photoshop in just another veil uh, that's not like so bright because in my opinion this photo is almost perfect but the the veil real the blown up veil just kind of kills it for me it's just my eye goes right there um so that would be my suggestion uh you're muted dan danled yeah, there we go. You know, it's funny you say that about that being a, as a photojournalist because, because you know, that's how I came through was as a photojournalist. And man, we couldn't move anything, Photoshop out anything. Right. Uh, and it took me, I bet, two years as a wedding photographer before I would move a Coke can out of the way. Like, like this is the scene, <laughs> right? I'm, I'm not moving anything. And so, oh man, that was a hard, a hard thing for me to overcome when I got into the wedding game, just because it was just ingrained in me not to do that. So I feel you on that. Absolutely. Absolutely. But seriously, what a freaking awesome photo, especially with that dog yeah. bear. I love it. I love it. Um, cool deal, Alyssa. Thank you so much. Uh, okay. Uh, last photo. Drum roll. Um, this photo comes from Steph or Stefan Lemaire. Did I say that right? You said that right. Look, even my dog says you said it right. Good job. Um, yeah, Stefan Lemaire. Um, God, I love this image so much. Um, you know, you see a lot of of uh, couples and skyline images, you know, but I don't know that I've ever seen one that just kind of you get to see everything in San Francisco. Like if you knew this is San Francisco, that is tremendous. And the colors are great. Um, I, I love this image that, yeah, I, I like the, their motion. They're going in for a kiss. So it's not like they're just static, you know, and sitting there, there's, you know, the the sky and combined with the orange of the, of the sunset, or I guess it's sunrise. I don't know. Uh, man, this is a great, a great image. Yeah. I mean, if you were, I mean, he's all, he's, he's a San Francisco based photographer from what I can see. And like, you know, if, if you wanted to really just like push the fact that you're a San Francisco photographer, when someone comes to your website, right? Like this is the shot, you know, it's, it's got all the awesome elements. It's got the nice foreground elements. It's got the, the couple, it's got the golden gate bridge. It's got the, the San Francisco skyline. What was super cool. Um, I'm, I'm, I'm trying to, trying to see what I can do to pick apart this photo, or at least just add some, some uh, constructive criticism here. The only thing, and this is so minor, but the, um, them holding the hand, their hands in the middle, it, it kind of, you know, it, it has this weird. It's almost like looks like a blob, right? It looks like there's something coming out of them. Um, so I would actually. If I were to pose them a little bit differently, I'd probably recommend they hold their hands a little bit lighter as opposed to very like tight like they are. So you have you see a little bit more definition in the fingers or a little bit more of the the outline of their fingers. So it because it looks like right here, it looks like a pineapple almost, you know. <laughs> um, yeah, it does. Um, Stefan is actually based in Texas. He's a, a Texas based photographer. And I think he oh, okay. went there for, a, I don't know if it was a wedding or an engagement. Um, the sun on the far left, a little hot spot there, maybe just crop in that little section, you yes. know, just a little bit to, to bring that in. So I'm not staring at that hot spot. If I, if I kind of hold my hand up and I block it. Um, but it's okay. I know, I know you like Stefan. Um, but uh, gosh, I think you're right. As a, as a, either you're a destination wedding photographer or you want to be a San Francisco, like this, this tells the whole story of their love together and the city and God, what an amazing picture. 
Yeah, absolutely. Um, and I would agree. I think he should probably crop it in a little bit tighter just to get rid of some of that, that, that really strong highlight. Um, and it, it would still be just as strong and powerful of an image if, if he did that. So um, that would probably be my only critique, honestly. But what a love the processing, love the colors, the transition between the blue and the yellows and the gold. Um, really, really super, super de duper. Yeah, it's great. I wonder if he could do this. Can, can do this in my little town of ten thousand. Make it look this cool. That'd be awesome. I don't know, um, but yeah, no, great job, Stefan. I love this image. Absolutely, absolutely. Well, that um, that officially brings us to the end, my dude. That's it. That was my mission one. here is complete. Yeah. Yeah. No, but dude. I was. Thank you. Yeah, man. Uh, it was absolutely great uh, to have you on on board. You were such an awesome host. You were so uh fine is there anything that before we sign off is there anything people should know about you or any place people can find you oh man uh let's see i will be i will probably be i don't have anything for sure yet but i'll probably be over at the uh, oh i let me take that all back hold on my dog hey come here just i know you're excited too i just um just like the ink is still uh wet on my uh my ambassadorship with uh after shoot and so oh, I'm okay. super stoked about that. And so I'll, I'll most likely be at their booth over uh, at uh, Shutterfest uh, coming oh, up nice. and, and, uh, in St. Louis uh, in the spring. So that's pretty cool. So I'm excited about that partnership with them. So I really, it's a, it's a great thing to do. So other than that, um, that's kind of all I have on the horizon right now um, as far as any educational opportunities. But you never know when something's going to pop up. Yeah, absolutely. Um, and then before we all go, I just want to announce the winner of the uh, – the pro prints photo and uh, this uh, randomly selected winner. I do one through 20 and uh, the winner was number 11, which was Kurt Walton. So congratulations. Make sure you reach out to me. Uh, I'll get you that promo code for that free canvas from pro prints. Um, other than that, Hey, Dan, again, thank you so much. You're an awesome uh, host. Really appreciate you. Um, and for those of you uh, who we gave some suggestions to on some images, uh, feel free to re-edit them, post them in the group so we can have a discussion about them. I'd love to see what you guys do. Yeah, thanks so much, John. I really love uh, being a part of the being a part of it, and what great images! And I'm impressed with all the talent uh, that we got to see tonight. Just incredible. Awesome, awesome. Well, hey, I'll let you get to your dogs and into your evening. Uh, but thank you guys, everyone, so much for watching. We'll see you next month. Okay. Bye bye.